Imagine your friend invites you to a party. You arrive and there's lots of people, decorations, food and drink. There's enough for everyone. When you're hosted by someone that generous, you don't have to worry about your needs. You can just enjoy yourself and focus on the people around you. Yeah, that's what a good host wants for her guests. And this is the picture of the world that we find in the Bible. Creation is an expression of God's generous love. He's the host and humans are his guests in a world of opportunity and abundance. And we're called to keep the party going, to spread his goodness. This is a beautiful picture, but it's not the way people experience the world. Rather, we find a world of scarcity and struggle, not abundance. And Jesus grew up in that kind of world. Under military occupation, people losing their land or families to debt and poverty. And yet, he would say things like this. Look at the birds. They don't store up food for themselves, yet they have enough. Or consider the wildflowers. They're beautiful and abundant, and they don't stress about their existence. And you all should live that way too. But surely Jesus knew that things don't always work out. I mean, sometimes there really isn't enough. And Jesus did experience poverty firsthand, but he viewed the world through the story of the Hebrew scriptures, which claimed that our scarcity problem isn't caused by a lack of resources. Rather, the problem is our mindset that God can't be trusted. Maybe God's holding out on me. Maybe there isn't enough and maybe I need to take matters into my own hands. And once we're deceived into that mindset of scarcity, we can justify the impulse to take care of me and mine before anyone else. And that leads to envy, and anger, violence, and a world where it seems like there's not enough. The party's over, it's turned into a battleground. But God wants humans to experience his generosity. And so he chooses one people, the family of Abraham, and he promises to give them the abundance that he wants for everybody else. God will provide what they need. All they have to do is trust his generosity. And through them, the whole world will see how generous the host really is. But that's not what happens. Abraham's descendants, the Israelites, enter a land of abundance and they promptly forget the host who gave it to them. They act like it's all theirs and like there's not enough. And it leads to war and Israel's self-destruction. If I were the host of this party, I think I'd just give up. But God doesn't give up. What he does is surprising. He gives another gift. Another gift? Yeah, but this gift is different. What God gives is himself. All right, and Jesus, the host himself, comes to join in on the spoiled party. And notice, Jesus lives with the conviction that there is enough and that our generous host can be trusted. His mindset of abundance allowed him to live sacrificially and generously even towards his enemies. And Jesus called his followers to trust in God's abundance like him. And that's why he said things like, sell your possessions and give to the poor, or don't worry about your life. He's inviting us to live by a different story, one that is built on trust in God's goodness and love. But living generously doesn't mean life is gonna go well. I mean, look at Jesus. He was betrayed by his friends and he suffered. And this was no surprise to Jesus. He knew that people would take advantage of his generosity. In fact, that was his plan. Really? Yeah, think about it. Jesus knows that we're all hopelessly deceived by this lie that there's not enough. Yeah, that lie needs to be defeated. And so that's what Jesus was doing when he gave us the gift of his life. Jesus' death was the ultimate expression of God's generous love. Yeah, God's love can turn death into life. and scarcity back into abundance. Or as the Apostle Paul put it, you know the gift of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, that even though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And Jesus called his followers to live like the real party has begun. Yes, he called it the kingdom of God. And our invitation to this party is yet another gift, the personal presence of God's own spirit that can teach us how to trust the generosity of the host, just like Jesus did. Yeah, and when you believe there's enough, you start seeing opportunities for generosity everywhere with our time and money, our attention. Yes, one of the most important ways that we can experience the abundance of God's new creation is sharing with others because of our trust that God is the generous host.